Before jumping into competition, go destiny, and convergence, I would like to say a few words about the business model network of esports. As in many industries, stakeholders are dependent on one another's work and success, at least to some extent. Industry is also driven by innovations and technologies, and creative people in the industry aim to exploit technology to the fullest. The driving force of every business model in esports industry network is to monetize the audience. The focus is on integration, which means that the emphasis is on cooperation rather than threat. The network simultaneously relies on cooperation and competition, meaning that stakeholders may compete in some markets and cooperate in others. And this is called competition. If esports industry would crumble, it would, be, it would be a disaster for all the companies involved in the industry. This means that all the competitors and collaborators share the same vision of a prosperous industry. So it can be said that they are co-destined as well. And competition and co-destiny take us to business model network convergence. Competition is not something that was born in the esports industry. The, the concept of competition, according to some sources, date as far back as to 1913. It can be argued that for emerging industries, competition can foster growth, and that is most likely the case in the esports industry as well. Probably one of the most used examples of competition is the case with Apple and Samsung. They compete in the smartphone consumer market, but then again, Samsung is also one of the main suppliers for Apple. Why it is worthwhile to discuss about competition is because it is one of the driving forces in the esports industry. The recognition of being an independent stakeholder is a precondition for competition. In practice, a game developer may require tournament organizers for their tournaments, but they're ultimately depending on having professional teams and players to play their game, most likely competitively. Competition can also mean learning from each other, sharing knowledge, um, inspiring creativity, and staying innovative. Long-term goal and strategy for esports growth is shared by the esports stakeholders. This is where the Go Destiny derives from. The difference between competition is that competition may end if it's not seen profitable. The concept of Go Destiny is interesting as it may be hard to grasp and it is hard to calculate how certain things may affect the industry. Um, for example, terminating a competition relationship may be harmful for the industry even if they may benefit the, stake the stakeholders. It is hard to see very far. Industry-wise, there are no governing bodies or institutions big enough to create shared vision in esports. Still, esports is driven by certain co-destiny. People who are involved in the industry generally want esports to grow and succeed as an industry. It can be said that co-destiny is perhaps shared more even more with long-term stakeholders, whereas younger ones are still adopting this way of thinking. For co-destiny, the trust between individual companies is important. Convergence is based on the rules of competition and co-destiny and can relate to convergence of successful concepts and ideas. There are talks about so-called sigma convergence, which could imply that esports organizations are becoming more alike. It is not a surprise that stakeholders who compete and are co-destined are becoming similar. The aspect that changes um, the companies may come from elsewhere from so-called new entrants to the industry. Convergence can be seen to be the boosting force for esports as common goal for every network member is to take esports further. The business model network will change and evolve. It is inevitable. With the massive influx of new stakeholders, a raise in capital is to be expected. This can be seen from the industry overviews, which show that the industry revenue is still climbing quite fast. Cooperative approach has been leading to a steady growth. More popular esports titles, teams, and players will emerge, and it is possible that there will be an increase, increased fragmentation in the esports industry. 
Are the actions made by esports companies profitable, or will there be a new bubble? It's hard to say, but it seems that spectating and playing competitive video games are here to stay.